The third century marked the end of the Pax Romana and the beginning of the political breakdown. The once prominent Roman Empire now began to lose more and more money. This loss was caused by many different factors. After a while of this chaotic empire, the emperor Diocletian made many reforms, which included splitting the empire into the eastern and western portions. The eastern empire continued to live on until about 1453 AD. On the other hand, the western empire fell earlier. Historians still argue about whether the western empire fell because of a catastrophe or because of gradual transformation. The main economic problem that the western Roman empire encountered was that they were just flat out broke. It was caused by many factors including depopulation and eventually led to enormous issues like hyperinflation. In Rome's earlier years, they got most of their wealth from just conquering people around them. But now that they stopped conquering, they no longer are getting that massive income, further weakening the economy. Trade was also plummeting and they were selling products like wheat and food that were necessities for things like China silk and other luxurious items. Another big factor that just added to the money problem was depopulation. In just about 800 years, Rome shrunk from about a million people to 30,000 people. Historians have evidence of depopulation with the massive amount of laws made to keep people from abandoning their farms, meaning that they didn't have enough people raking in the necessary foods for the empire. Some other reasons for this massive depopulation were from the diseases and plagues that killed almost 10% of the population, people leaving or dying because of the fighting and war, and possible climate change. All of these things further added to Rome's problems. The less people that were in the empire, the less taxes, and the weaker the government, the less trade there was. These problems added to Rome's deteriorating economy. To solve the money problem that this, they decided to just print more and more money, causing inflation to skyrocket, they also started using less and less silver in the actual coins, called debasing, causing the value of the coins to go down and down, with prices going up and up, causing an economic crisis. Another big problem the Western Roman Empire was faced with was ineffective leadership. During the crisis of the 3rd century, there were 22 emperors in about a hundred years, most of them dying by assassination and not lasting longer than a year. This is because whoever had the control of the army because became the emperor and took care of the previous one in one way or another. The army would repeatedly get tired of the emperor for all of the economic problems discussed earlier that he couldn't fix. This led to generals rising up becoming emperor, getting overthrown, and the cycle repeating over and over again, getting nothing solved. Lots of the barbarians wanted the benefits of being civilized, and Rome needed a bigger army due to depopulation. So Rome barbarized their armies, or incorporated the barbarians and had them join. Slowly more and more barbarians joined and less and less of the army was Roman. One of the main myths about barbarians is that they are completely anti-civilization and that they are out to destroy and sack it. Another myth is, myth is that they just suddenly came out of nowhere and sacked Rome in these hordes of massive groups. These are all completely inaccurate. In fact, most of the barbarians actually wanted the benefits of being a Roman citizen, which is why they joined the Roman army. The barbarians were also always around during the Roman Empire and were always a threat. When the barbarians were not getting the benefits that they had hoped for in the Roman Empire, they were not very pleased. Because of the prominent internal problems Rome was already faced with, different barbaric tribes rose up and gradually took over the Roman Empire until Rome had nothing left. So, did Rome fall? Yes! Yes, it fell, definitely. The western part of Rome fell when the last western Roman emperor was overthrown and western Rome became multiple little Germanic kingdoms. In the ancient times, the majority of people under the emperor, whether the emperor was Roman or not, still considered themselves Roman. 
because these peoples that considered themselves Roman made up most of the Roman Empire, it makes the transition of the Roman Empire more continuous rather than broken up. Yes, the barbarians did call themselves Roman. However, were they really Roman? No, they were not. The barbarians were not truly Romans because they were never given Roman citizenship nor the benefits of being a Roman. The barbarians merely called themselves Roman, but in fact they were not. The emperors that succeeded the last Roman empires all tried to emulate the Roman political system without trying to really change it. All these dramatic tribes wanted to do was to join the Roman Empire to get all the benefits that Roman citizens were given. Perhaps the barbarians did not conquer to change. But no matter the intent of the barbarians, nevertheless, they did change the Roman Empire. Also, even though the barbarians may have tried to keep the Roman way of life, that does not mean they are still Roman or that they adapted the Roman culture. Yes, there was a lot of major changes that occurred after the barbarians came and took over. But all of these changes were gradual and therefore supports my argument that the Roman Empire was gradually transformed instead of suddenly collapsing. Even though the change was gradual, there was too much change for it to still be called the Roman Empire. For example, literacy disappeared, architecture became primitive, and there was less trade. There was a decline in culture, economy, and population. So if the barbarians were trying to keep the Roman Empire, they did not do a good job of sustaining it. And this new civilization is too different to be considered the Roman Empire. A lot of the causes said decline only affected the urban areas and the countrysides were not as affected. Because Rome was very dependent on agriculture, the suburban area was very big. While the urban area was very populated, more people lived in the countryside. Even though the changes occurred mostly only in urban areas, the changes were extreme! Also, the urban areas were a very important part of the Roman Empire, even though most people lived in rural areas. The urban areas were the centers for politics, trade, and much more. The supposed fall of the Roman Empire is mainly the breaking down of the political structure. The people and culture did not disappear and become uninfluential all of a sudden. Even though the population was smaller, they still lived. The weak government that eventually fell was also replaced. Maybe not fulfilling the same exact things, but the churches started to have a bigger influence on the citizens, and continuation of trade showed that the Roman civilization civilization didn't suddenly crash. Yes, true, true. However, I would like to point out one thing. Once the barbarians took over, the Western Roman Empire became multiple Germanic kingdoms. You cannot leave out this fact because kingdoms are not an empire because they are separately ruled, so this can no longer be considered a Roman Empire. All this ended with the crushed Western Empire and the thriving Eastern Empire. Many historians argue about whether the Roman Empire fell or just transformed. Because both arguments have very concrete evidence, there is a great possibility it was both. This decline was evoked by both external powers, such as the Germanic tribes, and also internal problems like depopulation. These factors all piled up on each other, leading to a more and more unstable environment until the empire eventually collapses. Though the Roman Empire is no longer residing in the Mediterranean, their culture is still influencing many parts of our society today. That 
was our bibliography.